I have been exploring myself where to go to get the best books on Chinese history so that I can understand uh, and see China's role in the modern world more clearly. When I recently had the uh, historian of Australian Chinese communities, Sophie Loy Wilson on uh, the Burning Archive channel, I asked her what are her top recommendations for you? So we live in a hyper complex world. Probably like you, I like simplicity, you know, and I like something that, you know, allows me to kind of like uh, trace a series of, of, of connections that make sense to me. And so the human scale of, of, of thinking about change, so biography, tracing one life has become hugely popular um, in our in our world for a reason. It's too complicated. We can't, can't keep track of everything. We also want to understand our own values and morality. And I think that the way that we have traditionally done this, look at all religions, is by an individual person, you know, look at our religious stories. So I think at the same time as historians are trying to tell these complex stories, uh, you know, of, of transnational interconnection, readers <laughs> are leaning more towards the human scale. One of the biggest challenges of exploring world history on your own when you're not attached to a university or something like that is getting really good advice on the best books to explore. I do my best. I've got a PhD in history, but I've got no current university connection. So there are certainly places where I'm a little bit unsure as to where to start. And if you just roll up at the library or your local bookshop, you'll often get what's popular, but not what's really the best introduction to some key aspects of world history. And that's especially difficult when you're talking about an area of history like India or China, where in your country, it may well be that there's decades and decades of uh, accumulated tradition, which is not necessarily quite right. And she was generous enough to give her top three tips for books which are accessible, approachable, up to date and current and will give you a really uh, uh, genuine understanding of some of the issues for China in its history, China in the world today. I wonder uh, if you'd be kind enough to maybe also just suggest a couple of um, top books that people might want to read just to get a more uh, rich, complex, um, but also humane sort of picture of whether it's the history of China or history of Australia, China relationships to just um, uh, understand, you know, uh, uh, that part of the world a little bit better today. Well, what? Because uh, I, I know myself, you know, detached from any sort of university or whatever. Sometimes, if you just rely on what's in bookshops or you know what's obviously there, it's a bit hard to find. Well, wh which of these <laughs> books should I read to 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 actually get a, a genuinely fresh original? perspective on things what are a couple of uh, one to three you know books you'd really recommend on oh, yeah. opening up people's minds to a different perception of china asia or oh, australia wonderful. china relationships wonderful question i have three <laughs> um you know i'll start i'll start with uh um a local a local example um, and I'll, I'll i'll go to examples from china I, I do think that um, memory uh, and, you know, books that, that deal with the complexity of, of, of human memory, both personal and political, are wonderful ways into human societies uh, because they're not polemic. They don't take a position of, uh, of argument at the beginning. They're not trying to convince you of something. And I think if you're interested in political theory and you're interested in political systems, then sure, like the polemics are good. But if you want to kind of entree, to context, to society, um, 
uh, I think memory is better. So I recommend South Flows the Pearl by Mavis Gokian, uh, published by Sydney University Press. It's quite affordable. Mavis Gokian was a Chinese Australian. Her mother was uh, English uh, from Perth. Her father was Chinese, born in the 1890s in Perth, became really inspired um, by communism in the 30s, joined communist movements in China lived in China, married a communist cadre. And then because of her mixed race background and her capitalist background was imprisoned in the Cultural Revolution. Ultimately, she returned to Australia on an ancestry visa with her daughter, Shaman, who lives around the corner from me in Ashfield. A few years ago, Shaman uncovered a manuscript her mother had written. Her mother had gone around in the 80s and 90s in kind of yam chai restaurants, in homes, interviewing her community of Chinese Australians about their lives. And what she found was incredible because she was part of the community and they trusted her, they revealed like their secrets basically to her. And so you have an incredible entwined history of Australia uh, and China at, at this time. And it, it's the story of democracy, communism as well. And it, it's a really incredible book. So South Flows the Pole is one I would recommend. Um, the second, um, book I would recommend is Red Memory by Tanya Brannigan, which just blew my mind. Again, this is a book based on a lot of oral history. So Tanya Brannigan, you know, asked the question, why is it that so many people's lives in China today are defined by this one event? And she's correct. And she shows that the Cultural Revolution was so seismic, so traumatic. It, it, it went so deep into families and, you know, human psychology that it has absolutely shaped modern China to this day, partly because it's so difficult to talk about. Uh, some people want to talk about it all the time and some people never, ever want to talk about it. So the book's brilliant because she goes around China and she, she sits with different people, be it people that run museums to the Cultural Revolution, be it people that are trying to uncover graveyards to those that were killed, you know, be it those who, who were involved in the killings. You know, one of the chapters is about a, a son who kills his mother. Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. And it's, it's, um, it's just beautifully written with a lot of compassion and it's frankly unput downable. So I would recommend, uh, South Flows the Pearl and Red Memory. The third book I would recommend is Oracle Bones by Peter Hessler. So Peter Hessler, Oracle Bones by Peter Hessler. Okay. So Peter Hessler was, uh, uh, a journalist that spent a lot of time in China uh, from the 1990s um, to today. He wrote a book called Rivertown, which, which I would also recommend about teaching English uh, in the area of the Three Gorges Dam uh, mm -hmm. in the 1990s and 2000s, um, introducing a lot of Western texts to his students. Um, he also wrote about Oracle Bones. Oracle Bones is a, is a history of China because Oracle Bones were very early um, kind of devised, used by Chinese emperors to divine the future um, in the, from the Shang, Shang Dynasty. And um, he goes right up to today. And again, it's, it's, it's a lot of using a lot of oral history. He talks to a lot of people, but he, it's just a very compassionate book and it's got really rich case studies. Um, and he never simplifies the story. He tries to understand, you know, what, what modern China is and frankly, who he is as well as a Westerner in China. So I would argue that, yeah, these books, so South Flows the Pearl, Red Memory and Oracle Bones are, are books that, you know, your, read, your, your listeners would really enjoy. Her tips for the top three books for Chinese history. Great way to discover the long, complex and emotional connections between Australia and China over sort of shared Asian history. And Sophie Loy Wilson talks more about that in the full video interview 